Hi everyone, it's me again, and I just wanted to make a quick video this time and talk to you about a, uh, a hack. A hack for increasing your acceptance rate when you're applying for jobs. Because many of us have been in the shoes, but many of us have been, when, whenever we're starting out usually, we're on these websites like Upwork or Pros or Translators Cafe or whatever they might be, and you're just trying to get started out, which means you have no referrals, no ratings, you don't have any of those stars next to you or anything, you're just a name with a person there and you're trying to get people to accept you for their job and you don't know how to go about that. Unfortunately, it can be very hard because you can say you have all the experience in the world, but you have to put yourself in the shoes of these potential clients. They see a whole list of names, you know, applying to their job, 20, 30, 50, who knows, different people applying for their job. And they're trying to differentiate between all these people. The best way, the easiest way for them to do it is to look at the ratings that are given out by each of these websites. Those that are rated highly go to the top of the list. Those that are rated low go to the bottom or get kicked out. But if you're first starting out, you have no rating. So how do you get the message across? How do you get hired even in those situations? And it's very hard. The cars are kind of stacked against you. And so you need to come up with other ways to be more attractive. Unfortunately, what a lot of people do is just try to lower their price. They try to lower their rates. This very often, look, it can work sometimes, but it very often doesn't work. Actually, my first job that I got was a pretty high rate. And just because I kind of didn't know any better. But let's face it, if you have a low rate, people don't expect much. But they might be on a budget and so it helps them to get started. I've mentioned before that there are various ways you can try to game this system. For lack of a better word, you can write down, I'm offering for a low rate just because, as you can see, I don't have any ratings yet. So in exchange for a good rating, obviously, if you're happy with my work, then I will do this job at a low rate. If you can get that message across, that's fine. But remember, when these potential clients are looking through 50, in fact, some jobs that I put out there, I've had more than 50 people apply. When you're trying to parse through all these different applications and see who's best, chances are you're not gonna be able to read that much. So there are certain methods of trying to get to the top of the heap, if you will. Now, I've already made a video talking about how to get your first client. It's called the chicken and the egg, I think. Uh, I can link to it down in the description below. But here, I just wanted to talk about a couple hacks of getting to the top of the list, because unfortunately, it's always going to be a numbers game. You can have the best application ever and be the most suited person in the world for that job, and you still don't get the job because the potential client never even got to your thing. Maybe they saw someone else at, you know, after looking at six, seven, 15 different applications and chose them and they never got to your application or they chose someone else because that other person is from their same town. They're like, oh no, you're from there too. I'm from there too. Oh wow, cool. How are you? You never know. These things are so random. So it is a numbers game no matter what, but you should use every method you can to get to the top of that list. So, Aside from the usual methods you should use, here's a couple hacks that you can do for yourself. First of all, when you, well, first of all, if you don't have a photo, definitely put a photo up. Remember, the client here is trying to hire you and it's based on experience, but the main thing now at this point in time is trust. Because as I said, you can list all the experience you want in the world, but how do they know that it's real or it's true or that they can trust you about, about that or anything. So you need to increase your trust. The first step is to put a photo. If you don't have a photo on your profile, put up a photo now. There's no reason not to have a photo. Just put up a photo of yourself. It doesn't, it shouldn't be a glamour shot or anything. And uh, I talk about this more in my course, but it, you know, a photo of you, whatever your workstation is, turn on your laptop right now and take a photo of yourself. Then that's perfectly suitable. You'll see some people put not a photo, but more like an avatar or something like that. That can kind of work usually once you already have clients. It's very hard if you don't have a client yet to get recognized if you don't at least have a photo. They need to associate you with someone. If you don't want to share your photo, there are various ways to do it. You can show half a face. You, they're very, I mean, you can, go, you can go into it and you can see. Or you can try an avatar if you want, but that's a bit risky. And I think you just decrease your chance of getting hired at that point. I think the best thing is always just to put up a photo. Definitely don't leave it blank. Absolutely don't. And don't leave the custom avatar of the, uh, of the website. Put up something, but put up a photo. 
Now, let's say you do have a photo already. Everyone else has a photo. So how can you differentiate yourself even more? Well, another way is to add a, uh, a title. You want to add a title that says more than what you do. Don't just say Italian to English translator. If you have something impressive on your resume, you went to a good school, you've translated before for a well-known company, that's what goes in your title. And you can say, so Harvard educated, LSE educated, or uh, past experience with uh, UBS or Bank of America or whatever. Anyway, something in that title tagline should go your most impressive thing because that's the first thing they see and very often they don't even look further than that. So you want that photo and you want that tagline to show something impressive. But what else can you do? Another thing, again, to increase the trust is to right away make yourself available over Skype or FaceTime. You want to put your Skype there, you want to put your FaceTime or whatever you have so people can chat with you face to face so they see you. And because any client, if they want to trust you, and they're willing to take that second step to do some research into you, you want to show that you're available right away and in the best way possible. You can't physically go to their office, well, you're still available on Skype. So they can talk to you face to face and that way they trust you because they see that you're a real person and believe it or not, this helps them a lot. Obviously you're a real person, but you know, if you're sending emails or something or, or sending out an application, you're obviously a real person. But in the mind of a client, they never know. They, you know, you never know if, if it's an agency trying to masquerade as a person or if it's a person who then decides not to deal with it anymore or, or whatever it is. When you're first starting out, it's just very hard and it's very difficult to get through the door. So making yourself available in any which way, Skype, FaceTime and a phone number, obviously, but especially Skype and FaceTime so they can see you face to face. That's definitely a good way to get ahead of the pack. Another way is to make a video of yourself. If you can make a video of yourself and link it in your bio or have it show in your bio as a thumbnail or something like that that they can click on and then it plays, then that's great as well because right away they can see, oh, I can see this person, I can see how they speak, how they communicate, and it gives me a sense of who this person is. Because a photo definitely helps. You definitely want a photo, but if you can have a video of yourself actually talking about what you can offer, if you can even personalize it for different clients, I'm not saying you have to do that, but on your bio, it definitely won't be personalized. But on your bio, you can have something that talks about what you offer and gives you a brief rundown of who you are and what you can do. If you can offer something like that, then absolutely. Find a place to put a video, find a place to link to it, you know, find a, a way to, uh, to make a YouTube video and then link on it, say this is the link to my YouTube video. That way, clients feel that you're very approachable and definitely more trustworthy. Remember, the goal here is you want them to contact you. They might not contact you with the job right away, but you just want them to contact you. So leave every which way in which they can contact you and the more personal they are, even if they don't use Skype or FaceTime or phone or anything to get in touch with you, the fact that you have it available says a lot to them and it gives a very good impression, a more trustworthy impression. And remember that just offering lower and lower, lower prices is not the way to go. It can help sometimes, like I said, but it definitely isn't the best way to get by it. Also because many times then you're stuck in that bracket of only offering low prices. And in fact, it can also backfire because if you offer an extremely low price, they don't think you're serious or they think, well, that's obviously not someone we want to deal with because they're not going to give good quality, even in the sense of you get what you pay for. So be wary of that as well. However, these other ways of increasing trust and making yourself more transparent and trustworthy definitely help and definitely help to put you ahead of the pack when you're playing that numbers game and trying to get that client. So that's about it. I hope you found this helpful. If you did, please don't forget to subscribe and please click like if you found this video helpful because that always helps. Also next to the subscribe button, you can click on that little bell so you'll be notified whenever there's a new video. And once again, you'll on this channel, you'll see videos that help with freelancing and how to be successful as a freelancer, as a freelance translator and as an entrepreneur. Okay, that's about it. Thanks. Bye.